When the members of two sets of numbers are paired together, you have what's called a relation. One particular type of relation is called a function. A function! A function is a relation in which each member of the domain is paired with exactly one member of the range. At its simplest, that means that each member of the domain, the first set, chooses one and only one member of the range, the second set. The three is paired with the two, the four with the one, the seven picks the six, and so does the eight. Hey, eight, what you doing? I saw it first. No way, we're both even. The six goes with me. It's okay, guys. You can both pick the six, because in a function, it is the domain members that are paired with only one member of the range. The range members can be chosen any number of times. I'm well, I saw the six, six first. We're even. You're we're both being even. pushy over there. You even. can't we have the together. six. It's I want the simple, six. Meanwhile, the 10 chooses the 11. And so, each member of the domain has picked one and only one member of the range. And that makes this relation a function. The pairings are often expressed as a set of ordered pairs. And that's one way of expressing a function. If, however, a member of the domain is paired with more than one member of the range, the relation is not a function. Here's another relation with a domain and range. The six picks the eight, the five chooses the seven, the three goes for the nine, but the two is having a hard time picking between the 11 and the four. Uh, I think I'll take the 11. No, 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 I really like the four, but oh, oh, no, but the 11 has double digits. But, 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 no, but the four has such nice angles. Oh, I can't decide. I'll pick them both. All the other domain members picked one and only one member of the range. But the two, he could make up his mind as a picker. First one, then the other. You might say he was fickle. That would make him a fickle picker. Yes, a fickle picker. He chose more than one member of the range. And so this relation is not a function. Oh, this doesn't oh, sound right. All the two is fault. I want to see this function. I want to throw the two out of the number line. Business. I'm sorry. A function is a relation where each member of the domain is paired with exactly one member of the range. A function can't have any fickle pickers. I want to oh, be in a function. That's the reason I showed up here. I want to be in a function. I want to be in a function. I don't like this at all. And if we write the relation as a list of ordered pairs, we can see our fickle picker demonstrated by two ordered pairs with the same x value. Another way of determining whether or not a relation is a function is by putting it on a graph and using what's called the vertical line test. A relation is a function if every vertical line that can be drawn through the graph intersects the graph at exactly one point. If any vertical line intersects in two or more points, it's not a function. Here's what I mean. Here's our original function. If we put this function on a graph and draw vertical lines through the points, we can see that no vertical line intersects the graph set more than once. It passes the vertical line test. It's a function. But if we take our second relation, the one with the fickle picker, and apply the vertical line test, we'll get a different result. You remember this disgruntled group of numbers. If we graph this set of ordered pairs and draw vertical lines, we see that one vertical line does indeed intersect two points, 211 and 24. So this graph mm. fails the vertical line test. This is not a function. There are many types of functions that you'll graph in algebra and beyond. They all pass the vertical line test. There are also relations whose graphs will not pass the vertical line test. These are not functions. The simplest and most common function is the linear equation. 
The graph is a straight line, most often diagonal, and it passes the vertical line test. Let's start with the equation y equals 2x minus 4. If we set up a table, we can find some points to put on the graph. For each number you substitute in for x, you get one and only one y value. No fickle pickers here. When we plot these numbers on the grid, the graph we get is a line. This graph passes the vertical line test. So the linear equation y equals 2x minus 4 is a function. Most linear equations will give us a line that represents a function. So we can write them in a slightly different form called function notation. Instead of writing y equals 2x minus 4, we express it as f of x equals 2x minus 4. The x still represents the members of the domain, but now f of x represents the members of the range. So f of x equals 2x minus 4 is just another way of expressing the equation y equals 2x minus 4. So in the case of f of x equals 2x minus 4, if we want to find the member of the range that corresponds to 5 in the domain, we want to find f of 5, and we find it by substituting 5 in for x and simplifying. 2 times 5 is 10, minus 4 is 6, so f of 5 equals 6. This is the same process we use when creating the t-table. We substituted for x to solve for y. But now, instead of thinking of it as x and y, we think of it as x and f of x. The math is the same. So a function is just a relationship where each member of the domain corresponds to exactly one member of the range, a relation with no fickle pickers. Functions can be recognized graphically by their passing of the vertical line test. And they can be expressed using function notation. Now keep all this in mind, and you'll never be dysfunctional when it comes to functions.